Oh, thank you, Jesus. What's on my mind? So um, I just posted a scripture that just came into my mind. And I just wanted to just get on here and talk about this scripture. Well, I don't know about you, if there's ever been a time, has there ever been a time for you when something, just maybe something that just scares you or make you afraid or make you troubled or worried? And uh, I was thinking about, you know, some stuff that I'm experiencing. Every new year seems to bring its own things, you know, starts out a little weird, but it usually turns out okay in the end. And um, the scripture that the Lord dropped in my spirit was um, from Psalm 56. Psalm 56 and verse 3 says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. I mean, David wasn't stating this as if, you know, being the king, that he's somebody who has just never been at that place. He's so strong and he knows, you know, he has this in control. But as if he was someone who understands that there are things that's going to get in, inside, that's going to get in your way, that's going to cause you to pause and feel afraid, to be troubled. No matter how much how spiritual we think we are, sometimes we face those that thing, that 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 little thing that comes up on you that make you pause and sometimes panic in a, you know, not out of not out of um, doubt of God, but just just it's just a shock to your system maybe, and you just feel hmm, you know worried or uneasy about the situation. Well, David is just saying to you tonight. As he, as he said to himself, what time I am afraid. What time, whatever time, whenever that time comes for you. And you feel yourself in that situation where you're just afraid. You're worried about things and what's going to happen next. David says, I will trust. What time I am afraid. I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my words. You know that there's some people that's just always trying to, you know, it, it's like they're always trying to, they're talking bad about you. They're putting things like trying to put words in your mouth saying you said this or you did that. Every day, every day they rest my words. And all their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They're not just popping out and letting you know who they are either. They're hiding themselves. They mark my steps. They're watching you. They're trying to figure out what's going on with you. They, are, they mark my steps when they wait for my soul. The enemy, your enemy come in many forms, many disguises and trying so hard just to, just to overtake you, just to watch you and to mark your word and to scrutinize you and trying to figure out a way to destroy you. But he says, shall, uh, he says, shall they escape by iniquity in thine anger? God cast down the people. O God, Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? God catches our tears in his bottle and uh, he has every one of them marked down. I'm not even, you know, anyways, whatever. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just letting the enemy know that whatever he's plotting against me right now, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. There are some demons on assignment, some people that are being used by God, um, by the enemy, I should say, to try to mess, you know, with my life and to try to overturn the plan of God. But it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And whatever time I'm afraid, I will trust in the Lord. 
I was just sitting here and I was actually singing this song. I don't know if anybody knows this song, but I thought I need to share this song because this is one of those old time songs that we used to sing when we were, <laughs> when we were in, uh, in, when I was in Jamaica as a little girl. I used to sing this song um, and the words meant so much, you know meant so much. And sometimes as we grow older, we tend to go away from what we knew as children, you know, but the Bible says we need to come to God as, you know, children. This, the song just says, I must have the Savior with me for I see not walk alone. And I must feel his presence near me. Oh God, I'm going to cry already. And his arms around me thrown. Then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. And I will go without a murmur and his footsteps follow still. I must have the Savior with me for my faith. At best is weak. He can whisper words of comfort <laughs> that no other voice can speak. Then my soul, hallelujah, shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will and I will go without a murmur and his footsteps follow still I don't even know why I'm singing this song it's just speaking to my spirit Oh my God, I can't even do this. Oh my God. <laughs> I must have the Savior with me in the onward march of life <laughs> through the tempest and the sunshine through the battle and the strife. Oh my God, excuse me, guys. <laughs> then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I will go without a murmur this is my resolution for this year to just stop complaining to just stop murmuring and the lord just brought this song to me as i was sitting here thinking like lord what's going on you know feeling troubled and the Lord put the scripture to me and he says, whatever time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. So that's what the Lord is asking for in this season is just trust, just trust, you know, just relax, rel rely on me for a moment here. Let me, let me help you through this. And your response then, my response should be, I will go without a murmur 
and your footsteps follow still. The last verse says, I must have the Savior with me and his eyes the way must guide till I reach the vale of Jordan till I gain the other side then my soul shall fear no ill let him lead me where he will I Lord I promise you to go without a murmur Lord and your footsteps follow still I don't know when I was a child and I used to sing this song it was so much easier to actually just say those words just know for sure that you believe that you know I will go without a murmur Whatever God said do, I was going to do it. But as we get older and as we get cumbered, you know, with the world of care, the Bible talks about the cares of this life that chokes the word so that it cannot produce fruit in our lives. The, 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 the cares of this world and the lust of you know, of riches, I believe is what it says. The, the lust of these things just chokes the word of God in us because there is a word that has been released in us. God has declared some things over our lives, some things that we are meant to do and to produce and to bring forth. But we are unable to produce these fruits because of the cares, the cares, the cares. Well, I'm asking the Lord to just... Help me to just cast cares, cast these things on him. You know, go back to that place where we sought first the kingdom of God. That was what we were seeking. We weren't seeking, you know, we weren't seeking for the things of the kingdom. We were seeking the kingdom, which is the dominion of God in our lives. We really wanted him to be king and to be Lord and not just to seek to, 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 to inherit the things of them. Well, I just pray that the Lord will just take us back, take me back to that place and take me to a new, a different, a different level, a new, a new height in him. Just to be able to, to get closer to him, to love him, to, to serve him with my whole heart. And to go, go, go without a murmur and his footsteps because the steps of the Lord are always there, right? He's always leading. He's always guiding. But so many times we turn out of the way and we start to follow other things. It's not because God is not guiding and is not leading us. So the footprints are always there. So if we choose, we can go without a murmur and his footsteps follow. Still, just keep on pressing on. Just keep on following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And I I don't know if anybody's um, receiving anything tonight, but I know I did. I'm like, I'm like overwhelmed right now because I started, you know, every year you get like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be like this and I'm going to be that. And then the year starts. And trust me, I have broken my resolution so far. Don't complain. Don't murmur. I think I started out my new year complaining and murmuring because, you know, things don't go right. I don't like certain things and all of a sudden, but I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. You know, I, I've never, I'm never one to declare that I'm perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. But I believe that God would highlight these things to let us know so that we, we can see where we're, we're at faults and where we can adjust and make things right again. You know, um, but I, I believe that I'm going to go through this year a better person 
um, a more committed Christian, um, more faithful um, to the to the Lord and to to the call, to the call. Because there's a call. There's something, something that the Lord has placed inside of each and every one of us, I think. And if we are able to step out and elect God, then God can do his work. I don't feel worthy of God. I, I sometimes don't feel like, like, why would he want to use me for anything, you know? But... He says, if you don't step up and do it, Jacqueline, I'm going to raise up stones. And I'm kind of like, no, I don't want stones taking my place. You understand? I want to do the work um, that he has called me to do. And I want to walk in the path that he has called me to walk. And I want to continue to serve the Lord and to live for him and to let him be God in my life. I would like to encourage you guys, those of you who are hearing me tonight, Whatever you do, I'm begging, I'm pleading with you. I want us to make heaven. I want us to be, to stand fast and not let go. And this is just the message that I feel that I'm just letting people know. Like, sometimes we just think God, like, it's like, we've heard it so many times. God is coming soon. God is coming soon. If we can't see the signs, then we're all blind. I remember when I was a little girl, Man, I would be waking up like in the midnight thinking God has come. <laughs> like, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I hope he, I would be jumping out of bed on my knees praying, thinking, I hope God has not come. That's how much it was so eminent in my spirit. Like, it's like God is coming soon and we're still waiting. But does that mean that it's farther away or it's closer? It has to be closer than when we first believed. And so we have to now get it right you know like get our make the scripture says it this way that we have to make our calling and our election sure now you're saved by grace not not of works you know lest any man should start boasting and be like yo look what i did you're not saved by your works you're saved by grace through faith so faith is what it takes in putting your faith in god believing that Jesus came, that he died upon the cross, that because of his death, burial, and resurrection, you can um, and you do have eternal life. But you access that by faith. But if you just, the scripture says that if the natural branches, the Israelites, right, the natural branches um, were cut off, right, so that we could be engrafted in. And if God would cut them off because of unbelief, then we have like a fearful, we should be looking with a fearful dread, you know, to the coming of the Lord. Because honestly, we, we, we as the, the, the ones that have been engrafted, when I was younger, I used to see my dad would take an orange tree and he would engraft it. So you would have an orange tree that would be giving, um, would be bringing forth oranges and tangerines, for example. So he would engraft the tree. It was an amazing, amazing thing to see how my dad would know how to split the, the, the limb in a certain way and take a limb from another tree that produced another kind of fruit. And he would engraft it in so that they would become one. After a while, they would become one, that they would become as if this branch from another tree is now part of this branch, as they would fuse together and grow. You understand? But don't be mistaken, that branch, although it is able to bear fruit, it's not gonna, it's, it, it's, it doesn't bear the same fruits like the original tree. It will bear fruit. Um, but at the same time, if you pull on that thing, you could literally rip it out. Because it's only been engrafted in. So the pressure that that branch could take would not be as much as what the natural branches could take. If God says, I cut off the natural branch so that I can engraft you in, it's easy for you to just be ripped off. You understand? So we now have to make our calling and our election sure that we don't live any in any way, do anything we feel like, go anywhere we want to go, do whatever we want to do, because we feel that, you know, well, we are saved already. And Jesus, you know, have us like we, we, we're, we and Jesus are tight. 
That's wonderful. And I believe that, that, you know, you can have that fellowship and that relationship with your God, but don't you get it twisted. We got to make sure that we live a life that is holy, that is righteous, that is set apart. You understand? Not because of my living, I'm going to be saved, but because I want to make sure that I get to where God wants to bring me. I don't just take anything for granted. You understand? Working out my salvation with fear and with trembling. God bless you guys. Keep the faith hanging there. Whatever you do, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I know that I'm going to keep on keeping on. I know that because he that has begun a good work in me will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. God is not going to leave me high and dry. He's not going to drop me along the way. Neither will he do the same with you. We got to keep on holding on to God, but don't take it for granted that we are saved. You understand? Our faith needs to stay planted in the source of our salvation. God bless you and I love you. Just remember that you got to go without a murmur and his footsteps follow still.